Hello everyone, today I'll show you how to make these markers showing the distance and the position of some objective, checkpoint, quest, some boss or anything you would like to highlight or guide to in your level. I have set up two types of markers. The first one is on the actual checkpoint in the level. It's visible in the middle of the screen right now where my first checkpoint is. They show an icon for the position and the distance away from the character. Currently it's 20 meters away. The second one is on your viewport, again with an icon and the distance. You can see it in the top right corner. It uh, also has an arrow that is showing the direction based on your character orientation to the next checkpoint. If I go through the first checkpoint right now, the next one is activated. If I go through it, the next one is activated and I'm currently not seeing the next checkpoint on the screen, but my viewport marker is showing me that it's to the left. If I turn around, I can now see it. It's 21 meters away and it's currently facing the forward direction. So the viewport is updated always with the direction to the next checkpoint and you can see the marker in the level to the checkpoint itself. When you go close to the checkpoint, I have currently set up it 10 meters away, the marker will disappear because you already know the position of the checkpoint and you don't need it on your screen when you're so close. So this is the setup that we're going to do today. You can use it for anything else for quests or objectives in your level. Let's start first with creating the markers that show on the actual checkpoint. You'll need an icon for the marker. I have this position marker icon and I'll use that. Create a widget blueprint. Right click, user interface, create a widget blueprint. Call it widget marker tutorial let's say for now to be different than that one and I'll open the one that I already have to show you how everything is set up inside and we'll recreate it in the other one. So it's just this simple setup here, a size box with a size of 15 in the width and 16 height, then a vertical box containing the distance text and the image. The image is with size 4242 and the text is with size 12. So let's recreate the same thing in the other widget. Let's open the new one. Start with adding a size box. It's in the panel section here. Add a size box. The size will be 50 width and 60 height. Inside place the vertical box and inside the vertical box we'll have the text and the image. Start with the text and then the image. Let's change this viewport here to desired on screen. Better representing the size that we'll get it on the actual viewport. Let's change the text size to 12. Add example text like 999 meters. And for the image, Let's choose the position marker icon and the size will be 4242. It will be placed in the middle. Let's also place the text in the middle and let's center it with the alignment option here. Let's compile and save this marker. We have the same setup right now with the other one, the original one I have in my level. Now we need to create the binding that will show the actual distance to the checkpoint itself in this text field right here. In the original widget that I created, there is a binding to the text. Let's open the function. First, it's calculate the distance from one variable that we can set up for the widget and the actual player position itself. Then it uh, converts this distance to meters 
it's rounded up so we don't have just 50.2 meters we use only the whole part for the number and then we just append the m letter for meters and we plug that into the return node here of the function to bind to the actual text value in the widget let's recreate this we need to create one variable so go into the graph section of our widget in the variable section click the plus sign and create a variable called origin location for example it will be of type vector because it will be a position vector let's compile and save and then when we go back to the designer section select the text click on the drop down next to the text field and click on create binding it will create a function that will bind this value to the text value of your text field let's calculate now the position and convert it to meters and plug right here as we saw in the original widget so control drag here this origin location variable and from this we need to subtract the position of our player so right click and use get player controller we'll get the controller index zero so our first player we'll get the control pawn of this player we'll get actor location and we need to subtract this location from the one that we have set up in our widget so connect this origin location with a subtract node to the actor location for our player we need to get the length of this vector this will tell us how much is the actual distance between the two points use the vector length node for this and this is the distance in centimeters to convert it into meters let's divide by 100 this now the distance in meters we need to convert this to string and then let's append to this string the letter m and then connect this to the return value of our function let's compile and save we have the binding for the text here when we create this widget and input some location vector it will calculate the distance between our player pawn and our position that we have set up for the checkpoint let's continue with the next step it's uh, adding this widget to the blueprint of our checkpoint you can add this uh, widget to any blueprint that you place uh, in your level if you want for example to have the this uh, marker show up the position for your next quest you can add it to your npc blueprint that will give you the quest or something like this i have it right now set up with this checkpoint system these uh, checkpoints are created based on the tutorial on the official unreal engine channel so in the unreal engine uh, youtube channel you can find this blueprint time attack racer tutorial series it will show you how to create this uh, type of checkpoint system if you want to recreate the exact same behavior that i have but you can add it to any other type of blueprint actor that you place in your level you just make sure that if you want to follow up the same thing i do you need to first create this blueprint system to add this widget to our checkpoint blueprint let's open the blueprint class for the checkpoint here select the scene component click on the add button type widget and create a widget component here and for our widget component into the widget class section choose w underscore marker tutorial the widget that we created right now if we go to the viewport we can see that the widget is added here to the, the vertical box and let's choose here to be centered on the origin compile and save and while we are here into the the widget blueprint let's go to the graph select our origin location variable 
click on the instance editable and expose on spawn. Checkboxes, we will need those to set up the position into our checkpoint blueprint. Compile and save here. And well, when we go back to our blueprint checkpoint, now we have a better alignment to the widget component itself. Let's change the space of our user interface from world to screen because no matter how far we are from this checkpoint, we want to see the size of this uh, widget the same. It will be on the screen space, not on in into our world. So let's change this to screen, compile and save. And let's just test for now what we have compared to the original marker that we have set up here into the blueprint checkpoint. Let's click play. I have the position marker on top. This is the new one. We need to round the number. We forgot that into the binding for our text. And also all of the checkpoints currently show the same distance. 41 meters. It's not as well the position, the distance to our character. The proper distance will, should be 21 meters. So let's uh, escape here and go back to the blueprint checkpoint. What we have uh, set up for the original marker, we need to set up for the widget. On the begin play event of our checkpoint, we get the marker and we enter the actor location of our checkpoint to the origin location variable for our widget. So let's do this the same for the for the other widget. Let's drag control drag here this widget into the graph editor on the begin play event. Let's get the widget from this component. Let's cast this widget to W underscore marker tutorial that we created right now. As this uh, marker, let's set the origin location. And this variable should be set up to the actor location of our checkpoint. So get actor location, the target itself. So we are currently into the checkpoint. So this target will be the checkpoint and we'll set the location of our checkpoint into the origin location for our widget for the for each of the checkpoints into the level. Let's test this. First, let's round the number into the widget because we forgot to do this. Click on the text component, go into the bind function here. And after we convert to meters, so after we divide by 100, then let's round to integer 64. Let's connect this here. So this converting to string, the integer to string. Then we adding the M for meters and we set this binding here. Let's go now into the level and see. Now I have properly rounded the numbers. We don't have the non integer part. And now they're properly showing and updating the distance to the player for each checkpoint. I don't have the same number for all of them that I had before. The difference right now with the setup for the original marker and the new one is that I'm showing and hiding the distance only for the active checkpoint. And this is uh, based on this uh, tracker blueprint. It's again from the tutorial here for the blueprint time attack racer on the original Unreal Engine channel. 
To recreate this behavior, let's start by opening the checkpoint blueprint, select the widget component that we added and search for visible and uncheck this uh, checkbox. That way, by default, this uh, widget for the distance will be hidden. And now open the tracker blueprint. And here, on the activate checkpoint function, we need to set the visibility to the widget to true. So drag from the checkpoint, get the widget, and now set visibility to true. Set it here after the original widget for the tutorial. And now let's compare the behavior of the original and the new one. They both show up. But when I activate the next checkpoint, I don't have the last one hidden from the game. It's still active and showing the distance. So let's go into the checkpoint blueprint. And inside here, when we trigger the box that's the actual checkpoint, after we check if it's a valid condition to make the checkpoint passed and activate the next one, then after this, I'll control drag here the widget and set the visibility to false, like it's done for the original marker. Let's compile and save this. And now, when we go into the game, after I clear this checkpoint, they both disappear from the level and then the ones for the next checkpoint are visible. And this continues for all the checkpoints that we have in our level. Now, we have only one difference and that is that our checkpoints are fading away when we enter in 10 meter radius from our checkpoint. And this is done here into our checkpoint blueprint. If I go to the viewport, you can see that I have added this uh, sphere component and it's with a radius of 10 meters, so 1000 centimeters. And on the component begin over overlap, I have an event set up here. I'm selecting the bike character. If it's a valid character, we are getting the marker widget and playing the animation inside the widget. If we go into the original marker blueprint, you will see one animation here. The render opacity is animated from 0 to 1 for 1 second. Let's recreate that into the new marker. Let's click here onto the animation, call this fade, select this fade animation, select the size box, and add the track for the size box. Click here onto the track, select the render opacity, change this to zero, go one second here into the track and set the value to one. And now if we zoom in here to see better, the animation is going from zero render opacity to one, so fully transparent to fully opaque for one second, compile and save. And if we go back to the checkpoint blueprint, we need to do this graph for the new widget. Let's disconnect this from the event. So add a sphere component, click here onto the add, type sphere, add this uh, sphere collision component type the radius to be 1000, then scroll down and to the on component begin overlap, click the plus sign. I already have it for this top sphere, so I'll delete the new one. So for this 
begin overwrap component. We need to select the actor that is overwrapping, so our character that is going through the sphere. Drag from here, cast to your type of uh, character. For me, it's this bike character. Then check if this character is valid, so you don't get errors in execution of the script if there's some problem. Create a branch by holding B and clicking. Connect this to the condition and drag, control drag the widget here, get the widget. And for this widget, cast to W underscore marker tutorial, the new type that we created. And as this marker tutorial, we need to get the fade animation that we created and we need to play animation and the target will be this widget that we have in our blueprint component. Let's start at time zero and play once this uh, animation and the play mode will be reversed because we want to play from fully opaque uh, marker to get it fully transparent our direction of the animation will be reverse. Compile and save. Now that we have this animation already created, we can go into our marker, go into the graph for the event construct. We can play this animation, control drag the animation here and set play animation on the construct event. The target will be self, the start time will be zero and the mode will be forward, so from transparent we will get to the fully opaque animation in one second. Compile and save this, let's close and let's hit play. Now they are both fading in when we construct this widget. And when I go 10 meters away, the top one is fading away. The bottom one is not fading away because we disconnected this graph from the event of the sphere overlap event. So I'll delete this. I'll delete everything related to the old marker. In that way, you can see that the logic that we created for the new one is uh, enough and it's doing everything that I showed. Let's go into the tracker as well. Delete this old marker. And leave the code just for the new one. Let's delete the old marker from the blueprint of the checkpoint itself. It's used somewhere. Yeah, this the setup for the location of the checkpoint inside the widget. We delete the old one and leave only the new one. Compile and save. And now we should be able to see the new markers on top of every checkpoint and the old one is deleted. We have the fade out when we go close to the checkpoint and fade in on creation. We have recreated everything for this uh, checkpoint type marker into our level. To recreate the other marker that's shown in the viewport in the top right corner, that's changing the direction to the next checkpoint. It's almost exactly the same. I'll show you the widget for the next checkpoint. It's the same size box with the vertical box inside. The text here is below the image and instead of just one image we have two images, one with the marker for the position and the other for the orientation that we are rotating based on the direction to the next checkpoint. If I select the text here, for the text field here there is a binding created. If we go to the function that's binded here, it's exactly the same as the one for the other type of marker. 
we are getting the player controller, the location for the player. We are subtracting for the variable that we have uh, set up as a position for our checkpoint. Then we are dividing by 100 to get the distance in meters and we are adding this M uh, letter at the end. Exactly the same as the other one. I will not be recreating this. The only difference is that uh, on the event tick we are updating the rotation for the image that's showing the direction that we need to face. Let's go back to the designer, select the image with the arrow, top of the details panel here, write direction and click is variable. That way you have it here as a variable into your event graph. For the event tick, choose the direction, set the render transform angle. Let's set the angle to 90 for now, just to show you what this is doing. Let's hit play. Now, because the angle is uh, set always to 90, it's always showing that the next checkpoint is to the right. It's not connected to our position, it's just rotated 90 degrees to the right. If I change it to minus 90, it will be pointing left. The angle is between 0 and 180 and 0 and minus 180 to the right and to the left respectively. And to calculate this angle, this is the equation that you need to create, getting the location for the player, finding the look at rotation to the location of our checkbox, and then subtracting the rotation of our player in the Z axis. Looking top down, this is the Z axis. Our character will be oriented in some way, so we need to take that into account and plug this result into the angle for this set render transform angle for our direction uh, image into the viewport. Compile and save this. And the other important thing is that when you construct this uh, widget, we need to get the tracker and select the first checkpoint inside, cho choose this checkpoint location and set this as an origin location variable into our widget. Let's recreate this. Right click here, get actor of class. The class will be the tracker. And again, for you, this logic will be probably different. For example, you must find the closest person that can give you a quest or something like this, depending on what you're using in this object. So if this, uh, this should not be actors of class, it should be single actor, get actor of class. Okay, now it's not an array. If it's valid, then we need to set the origin location value. Out drag this here. And for the value, we get this checkpoints array. First, let's choose the tracker here. Now get the checkpoints array. We will get the first one with the index of zero. We'll get the actor location and we'll plug this location into our origin location variable. Compile and save. Let's delete the old one. We're using the new one so you can see that everything works. And now if I hit play, I have my orientation to the next checkpoint arrow properly updating when I move and when I rotate my character. If I go through the checkpoint, it's updating to the next checkpoint. This is still, I didn't show you how to do this. Let's go into our heads up display. When you add this to your heads up display to the viewport, 
let's go down here it's of type widget next checkpoint drag it here onto your heads up display choose the anchor to be based on the closest angle and now because i didn't show you how to update the active checkpoint if i just play the bottom one is always showing the orientation and the distance to the first checkpoint instead of the active checkpoint and as you remember the active checkpoint function is it into the tracker so into the activate checkpoint we need to change the origin location for our next checkpoint widget into the heads up display so we are getting the controller reference then getting the HUD reference inside there and we're getting the widget that we place there and setting the origin location variable to the actor location of our checkpoint so here get actor location setting the actor location of my widget next checkpoint one if i compile and save go into the heads up display select this this is the name of your widget so for widget next checkpoint one when i activate a checkpoint i'll get the location for this checkpoint and plug it into the origin location variable in that way that every time that you change the active checkpoint it will update to the next one and this everything for the widget on your viewport it's almost exactly the same as the old one just a little extra logic for the orientation of the arrow and that's everything for this tutorial guys if you like it please like and subscribe it will help a lot for the channel and i'll try to make the next tutorial soon by that time you can comment if you want to make some request for some tutorials or you have some questions for this and that's everything for now bye